being live right here at the scenery of the biggest bombing the world of terrorist attacks has ever experienced. The bombers are not even in hiding. They are out here with covered faces, ready and willing to talk to any reporter that is available. Very daring. Now let me see if I can get to talk to one of the terrorist bombers. As you can see, the worst of the bombing is already over. I was opportune to talk to one of the terrorist bombers and when asked his motive behind this extravagant public bombing, he said, starting a new world order. What's wrong with the current world order? Can you imagine being at the site or scenery of a disaster or crime and reporting life or exposing ills in a society or nation that just may be willing to do anything to take you down. I don't think I could. But there are definitely a good number of great African luminaires who did that. And more. For instance, Kamla Afeke Dumo. You're watching BBC World News. My name is Kamla Dumo. Kamla Dumo. The Ghanaian journalist who was popular for being the main presenter on the BBC World News program Focus on Africa. He was named one of the 100 most influential Africans of 2013. For me, the most important thing is to know what I'm talking about, to know the stories. And if there's a cool factor, I mean, it doesn't hurt, does it? <laughs> Dumo had a great impact on how the continent was covered news-wise. And at the time of his death, he was the only West African news reader in BBC World News. <laughs> Prestige. The narrative will always glorify the hunter until the lion itself learns how to write. He interviewed a number of high-profile individuals, individuals like Bill Gates, Kofi Annan, and Chimamanda Adichie. He left behind a legacy for journalists and Africans alike. And in his honor, BBC introduced the Kamla Dumor Award. This award is presented each year to an outstanding individual living and working in Africa with the ambition and potential to be a star of the future. The biggest single audience for the BBC is Africa. So no one's going to have to tell you that you have to present programs that address the needs and the interests of an African audience. Passing down his legacies and building strong youth for tomorrow. Declan Okwalaize. When you talk about decorated journalists in Africa, Declan Okwalaize is definitely one name you will hear. And his career began as an investigative journalist at The Guardian. He covers diverse issues such as politics, business, health, environment, human rights issues. Issues of health are issues of people. And journalism in any case is about people. There is no human being, no Nigerian that uh, does not need some form of health care. And so every health policy affects every individual Nigerian. And he was the first Nigerian to win the coveted CNN African Journalist of the Year Award, which I might add is the most prestigious African Journalism Award. He had to quit entering for the awards because he wanted to give others a chance. Interesting. Okwaleke has also won so many local Nigerian awards. His commitment to highlighting and fighting the ills of society, as well as standing up for the disadvantaged, made him a mentor to several Nigerian journalists, teaching, training, and leading them to report responsibly. Kudos, Declan. Member of the Order of the Federal Republic. Publisher, author, politician, owner of Hot FM, and journalist, Christiana Anyao. Famously known for her publication on Sunny Abacha, for which he sentenced her to life imprisonment, where she almost lost her sight. Talk about freedom of the press. She only spent four years in jail and was granted bail. Chris also worked for NTA and the Emo Broadcasting Corporation as both newsreader and reporter. Christiana Anyao is a Nigerian legend. It was during her tenure as Commissioner of Information, Youth, Sports, Culture and Social Welfare in 1987, as well as Editor-in-Chief of the Sunday Magazine, 
where she gave a detailed cover on the unsuccessful coup d'etat against Abacha. Christiana Anyao is a living example that journalists can make a difference in society by exposing the truth. And finally, Anas Aremayo Anas. In 2009, Barack Obama commended him as one who possesses elements of a great journalist. We see that spirit in courageous journalists like Anas Aremayo Yeo Anas. Who, who risked his life to report the truth. An anonymous icon who has kept his identity a secret from the onset of his career has name, shame, and jail as the motto. I am an undercover journalist. My journalism is hinged on three basic principles. Naming, shaming, and jailing. His most notable publication has to be number 12. This dismantled the whole Ghana Football Association. And it was named in respect to the fact that corruption was the 12th player of the football team. Honestly reminds me of Kiki's Sex for Greats documentary. Hmm. He had filmed top ranking officials in the association collecting bribes and all sorts of things. An award-winning journalist and advocate for peace, Aremayo had launched a platform online for anonymous people to submit videos exposing corruption. He exposed 34 judges collecting bribes. That's very risky. His anonymity was truly the most crucial element of his work, and he gave a chance to the new generation to do the same thing. As a result of the success of Africa Investigate series, we are moving on to World Investigate. By the end of it, a lot more bad guys on our continent will be put behind bars. Do you think that if we had such anonymous justice in Nigeria, we would have lost the likes of Delegewa? Would Christiana have gone to jail? Well, God bless our Luminar journalists. And as the newest Luminar journalist in town, we will do our good job in serving you hot dishes of exposed truth and luminars. No sex for grades! To stay tuned to that and for more, hit the link, like, share with your friends and family, and I will catch you on the next episode. Bye!